When you look at animations of people or animatronic robots or other strange human looking things, do you feel repulsed? If so, you, my friend, are a victim of something called the Uncanny Valley. Trace here for D News, and I have been wanting to talk about this since we started the show. At the 2013 Game Developers Conference last week, this animation was shown by Activision. Does this freak you out? Does it make you uncomfortable? The revulsion that you might be feeling right now? It's called the Uncanny Valley. It was originally coined by Masahiro Mori. He was working with robots back in 1970, and he postulated that as robots began to look more and act human, they would someday repulse their human friends. The graph shows that as a robot becomes more and more human-like, we get more and more comfortable with it until it hits the peak and then we crash into the Uncanny Valley. And at worst, a still robot will remind us of a corpse and a moving robot will remind us of a zombie. Since 1970, we have actually made robots more human-like, sometimes hitting deep into that uncanny valley. The problem lies in the human brain. We strive for social interaction, so the brain looks for recognizable faces everywhere. Clouds, inanimate objects, food. As a species, we classify things pretty quickly, and the theory is once our brain decides that you're human, we get really freaked out if we notice that it's actually not human. Our brain does not respond well to being tricked. In 2010, a study in the journal Psychological Science found that we are pretty good at spotting fakes because we look at the eyes. Our robots might not be quite ready to freak us out yet, but animation, movies, oh, they get creepy. In 2001 Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within was so painstakingly animated that each frame containing the heroine took an hour and a half to render. But it fell flat in part because viewers hated the dead look in their eyes. Some movie houses completely avoid the valley by not trying to closely mimic humanity. Like Pixar, when they made The Incredibles, they knew not to try and leap the uncanny valley. Instead, they opted for a more animated and angular feel to their characters. Many roboticists and animators have tried to jump the valley, and occasionally they've succeeded, but They've all kind of cheated. This is Professor Ishiguro and his robotic counterpart, R2D, uh, uh, Geminoid, it's Geminoid. It's creepy, and depending on the person, he might have actually crossed the Uncanny Valley. A better example is Gollum from Lord of the Rings. He doesn't really hit the valley for the same reason as Geminoid. They're puppets rather than robots. Gollum's face and movements are based on the acting talent of Andy Serkis, although this isn't, I guess, strictly part of the Uncanny Valley because Gollum isn't really human. He's not really jumping the valley so much as Skirting it, I guess. Trixie Gollum. The Uncanny Valley is a topic of debate, with some psychologists finding that it doesn't exist and others finding evidence that it does. So why does it exist? We're still trying to figure that out. But until we do, we're gonna have to keep bumbling along, trying to get our robots just at that peak or all the way on the other side. Do you get creeped out with animations or animatronics like this one? Tell us your story, tweet at us, post on our Facebook wall. We love to hear from you. So thanks for tuning in. See you with more videos twice a day, every day. Catch you later.